Today we're talking batteries and specifically how to extend the life and cycle rate of your LiPos. Now I know a lot of people who get them uh, and who have first started out in the hobby probably don't know that much about the batteries or how to treat them very well um, and even some professionals don't know some of these tips uh, to help sort of extend the life of them. So this is basically going to probably double your uh, cycle rate, you know, maybe go from about 150 to 300 charge cycles that you're going to be able to use on a LiPo if you follow these tips. You don't need anything apart from this, which is a battery voltage meter. So you plug it into the battery and then you'll see on here it will come with four cells because that's a four cell and the total charge on this is 14.9. It will then tell us the charge on each cell, so 3.71, 3.72, 3.72 again and 3.70. So those are slightly unbalanced, um, but nothing drastic. Um, only 0.01 of a volt off, so not too bad. So you want to get your hands on one of these. They're about two pounds online. Probably buy a couple um, and just take them out with you when you fly. So before we even begin checking our battery, you want to make sure you've got a good high quality battery, not some cheap Chinese knockoff uh, that's probably not going to do you very good. And also make sure you've got a good balance charger um, so you can get... Um, all the cells correctly balanced uh, like this pretty much is as well you don't want the cells to be off by probably more than five or ten millivolts um, so uh, that's probably going to do some damage so good battery good balance charger is the key to all this now let's go on to the proper tips once you've got yourself a good balance charger you want to make sure the cells in it are actually all completely balanced because if they're not then that's also going to degrade the battery life um, and also you want to be sure you're not overcharging it so anything higher than about 4.2 volts per cell is going to be overcharging it and also also make sure you're not over discharging it as you well. You definitely don't want to be going any lower than about 3 volts per cell because that can seriously damage it as well. When you're charging make sure that the battery itself is not warm, make sure it's nice and cool to the touch. Um, don't charge straight after flying where it's going to be warm uh, because that is not going to do it any good anyway. So onto the actual flying when you're using your LiPo, whether it's in um, a model aeroplane or a quad like most of mine are, uh, you want to make sure that you're not draining it completely to sort of um, a complete discharge because when you sort of fly until you can't even fly anymore and it just drops out the air, that is going to really damage the battery. Um, you need to only fly for about 80% of the charge, I'd say. Um, so only use about 80% of the battery um, and then you'll be able to get a lot more cycles out of it. If you're going to be doing some really aggressive flying, um, sort of... Uh, stunts and amazing things like that then I'd say probably maybe take it down to only using about 60 or 70 percent um, and you're going to get a much longer cycle time and battery life out of these so when you're flying do not drain it completely. So probably one of the most important things about LiPos is their storage and how to do it correctly. You do not want to store these 100% charged. You do also not want to store them um, completely discharged because both of those are going to damage this, uh, especially if you're storing it for quite a long time without using it. Um, if it's 100% or 0% charged, uh, then it's really not going to do this any, any good. The cells inside are going to oxidize um, and it's going to seriously degrade. So unless you're going to fly, say, tomorrow, do not charge it above about 50 or 60 percent um, try and keep it storage um, at around that value of charge so if it's going to be for more than a couple of days you know you're not going to fly it discharge it if you've already charged it um, or uh, charge it rather if it's not charged at all um, because you want to be storing it at about a 50 percent charge and that is going to keep it nice and safe as for the storage themselves, that's up to you what you want to do it, if you want to put it in a LiPo bag or an ammo case. But another way to extend the life of it is actually storing it in a cold place, um, probably somewhere maybe in an external garage or somewhere like that, nice and cool. Um, definitely away from the heat, don't leave it in cars for a long time or a warm place. Um, but one thing you can do is actually put it in the fridge. Uh, now this will lower the internal temperature, obviously, um, and that will basically slow down the chemical process going on inside the battery. Now I wouldn't inv advise this for huge batteries, um, probably for sort of smaller, maybe tiny whoop batteries and things like that because uh, it'll take up less space and they'll be ch quicker to uh, warm up once you've taken them out. But if you are going to do this, then be sure to seal it in maybe sort of a Ziploc bag or an airtight container or something like that so that when you take it out of the freezer, um, of the fridge, sorry, uh, it's not going to condense um, and you're not going to get water in the battery uh, because that is going to damage it. So if you do keep it in the fridge, it'll keep it. You could probably keep it fully charged in the fridge for maybe a couple of weeks or so. But like I say, keep it in a Ziploc bag or an airtight container uh, so that it doesn't condense once you take it back out. Finally, and this is an obvious one, you want to steer clear of physical damage to the battery itself. I know sometimes this can't be helped if it's mounted on the bottom and you sort of have a crash landing or something. Um, but really do try and be careful with these because if they get any sort of hole in them or anything like that or just general 
general wear and tear, they'll start to puff up. Uh, and once they become puffy and you can actually get some resistance, um, sorry, no resistance when you squeeze the battery, whereas I have got serious resistance here, um, then that is really going to do some damage. So beware of physical damage. And that can even be things like um, if you've got the battery strap on there, putting it on too tight and just squashing the battery and things like that. Um, so you need to be really careful of that. Anyway, guys, if you follow those tips, you should probably get something like double um, the amount of cycles, probably even more than that, um, from your battery life. Um, and you're going to have uh, much, much better um, use out of your battery and value for money. Anyway, guys, I hope you found that useful. Uh, be sure to check out my other videos if you like this, and I'll see you next time.